What's going on fam? It's your boy DMV back with another one. And I am in Texas. I'm in Austin, Texas, uh, visiting some family. Uh, in a couple of days, I'll be heading out. Actually tomorrow, not a couple of days. Tomorrow I'll be heading out to Vegas for the fight, for the weigh-in. And you know, hopefully I can get in the fight and, and give you guys some footage that way for the Spence Crawford fight. But I'm gonna touch on camp, uh, you know, what happened yesterday in the practice. Uh, a couple of things. Let, let's, let's address the elephant in the room. Um, the Dak Prescott interception. Um, Semi Fioco, you know, dropped what seemingly looked like a perfect pass right in his hands. And it bounced into the arms of Eric Scott. So I'll tell you guys a couple of things, right, that, that I took from that play. I loved Dak's timing. I loved uh, where the football was placed. Uh, it couldn't have been a better football from your quarterback there. Simi needed to bring that play. He, he, he needed to bring that play to closure. He needed to execute there. He didn't. But I think the bigger thing that we, we need to look at with that play is not cutting Semi Fioco. Sure, Simi should have caught that football. He's a professional football player, right? And I know that Dak Prescott has it, had, a, had, had a few interceptions that happened like that last year. But let's talk about how close to him Eric Scott was and how opportunistic the rookie was. That's the story right there, guys. It's not the interception. Because those are going to happen to Cam. Dak is probably going to throw maybe five or six more of those interceptions in camp. That's what camp is for. That's what practice is for. It's for you to work out the kinks. It's for you to, to work out in jail. You know what I'm saying? The defense is going to make some plays. The offense is going to make some plays. But for the rookie to come in day one and be there to, you know, be in position to make a play, you know, they've been, sing they've been, they've been uh, singing the praises of Eric Scott for quite some time with some of his abilities. And, you know, I think him being right there, available to make that play, it's something we should be talking about more than Simi dropping the ball or Dak Prescott throwing another interception. So that's one thing. Number two, we're going to talk about the injury. So uh, Dono went down uh, with the calf strain, and, and Israel Mukwamu went out too. So I think we find out the results of the MRIs and stuff today. But the Dono injury definitely uh, scares me a little bit. It can, I, I'm definitely concerned with that injury. And I say that because I, I, it reminds me of when Kevin Durant went down uh, with, the, with, with the calf strain. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like when you hear the word, you hear words like strain, that's when they don't know what it is before, before any type of medical attention. Now, if they thought that he, you know, tore his Achilles or ruptured it, you know, they, they would say that if, if that was the case. I don't believe, and I'm saying that now, I don't believe that he ruptured his Achilles. But what I will tell you is, I, the initial report, uh, I, I believe was four to six weeks, him being out, that means that it's bad. You know what I'm saying? And the MRI and the reports will tell us how bad it is today. But the fact that he was carted off for a calf strain, that right there worries me a little bit with the type of things that I know about injuries and recovery. Bro, I spent most of my college career battling injury. You could say DMV was injury prone <laughs> when it came when it came down to it. You know, I'm I'm never gonna be somebody that's gonna hide things about about my playing career and why I didn't make it. Yeah, I was an injury prone dude, and I've had strains and breaks and and you know what I'm saying MC, MCL sprains and high ankle sprains and all of that type of stuff. I had a foot strain actually, which I, it felt like a break to me. And that's what I'm saying. Like when you hear the word strain and then they talking about four to six weeks, like it, it, it's probably worse than what you think it is. And, and they can't really characterize it until they get some specialists to really look at it. But you know, that leaves the, the door open for, for, for Marquise Bell. And you guys know that I'm the biggest advocate for Marquise Bell. And it sucks because, you know, I talked about this with a couple of people. I said, Marquise Bell, the way that he's going to get on the field is somebody's going to get injured and he's not going to look back. And Marquise Bell was the guy that jumped in and got the reps. So what I told you guys before was that Marquise Bell was going to be our backup free safety, but he's also the backup of that role that Dono has. He's also probably the backup to Curse's role. Like, he's the guy that's up next. And 
you know, keep an eye out for Marquise Bell and, and how he responds. I'm fairly certain that I'm fairly certain that Marquise Bell is gonna come in and, and do the damn thing. He's gonna fly around, he's gonna be in the right positions. What's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to do a lot more with your defense because Malik Hooker is a guy that can play center field and play up in the box, and Marquise Bell can do the same things. So you'll be able to interchange them a lot more uh, with with this lineup here. So look out for that. But outside of that, man, I just kind of wanted to touch on it, talk about camp. Uh, there'll be some things today, but I wanted to put out a morning video for you guys. But I'm out, man. Appreciate y'all. Peace.